Well, good morning. We're going to be continuing <clears throat> our, uh, we're going to continue looking at the difference between true and false shepherds today. And uh, we'll, hopefully we'll be looking at some verses out of the New Testament. Um, today I kind of, I don't know, I sense that perhaps we should analyze the false teacher from this light is and it goes like this in fact I guess I could title this message this way the false teacher will always seek approval from the world and I think that's a true maxim I think you could employ that as a maxim as a statement of truth <clears throat> You, you can recognize a false shepherd by his the attitude he has toward uh, man pleasing and, and looking good to people looking good to not looking good to the world not God looking good to the world the false teacher <clears throat> to a false teacher public respectability social acceptance being well liked and well respected by men in the kingdom and out of the kingdom i want to focus on men outside the kingdom of god though he will seek to garner the respect and honor of those outside the government of god he will adopt the false teacher will. He adopts the standards of the people in the world. He identifies with that. What standards are we talking about? Well, I could start off the top of my head with education. <clears throat> In order to be a minister of the gospel, you must be authorized by a university or, a, or an accredited seminary. That's no different than the world. You need to have papers to be authorized to practice certain professions in the world, right? You need to be accredited by the world, and, and the world must acknowledge you as worthy of so-and-so profession or job, what have you, career. <clears throat> and a man or woman in the world will, will openly and quickly acknowledge with no hesitation that he earned that degree or that degree was or his knowledge was obtained through studies under so-and-so teacher or professor well, well seminary is no different I suppose you could say sem seminary, in many cases, indoctrin indoctrinates the attendees to adopt a world standard with respect to ministry. But the false teacher, the false shepherd, that's a high priority with him. Every one of them is acceptance respect honor appearances. appearances okay you're making me jump ahead of myself oh, no that's fine yeah. you're right it's all about appearances because the world is all about appearances yeah. John the Baptist didn't care what he looked like no <laughs> and John the Baptist was authorized from above yeah. he didn't have papers So, 
And this ties in with, this leads to my other point about false teachers and, and something else we can employ to recognize them. Many of them. I, I see two types. Can I share this with you guys? I see two types, really, of tactics employed by the false teacher. He centered around his audience, who he's going to appeal to, who he's going to deceive. different tricks for different audiences. A false teacher needs to know his audience, and they do. You know, there's a verse in the scripture that, where Paul says, uh, the Jews seek a sign and a miracle, and the Greeks seek philosophy and intellectualism. I can't remember where it is. I read it the other day. And the false teacher is going to tailor his persona and message for one of those two groups. The mystical-minded folks, who Paul called the Jews, and the intellectuals, who Paul referred to as Greek. I've seen, the, off the top of my head, what I'm thinking of now are two, and I'm sure there, there have got to be more classifications of false teacher, but the two I'm thinking of now, you have one segment, which is smaller, but one segment of false prophets and teachers that appeals to the mystical-minded people. The ones who seek a sign, the one who the people who seek miracles and supernatural stuff you know mm -hmm. that's kind of the camp i came out of the holy rollers you know <laughs> <laughs> i never was a holy roller though i couldn't i could never get into that not that it's wrong i'm not saying that either if it's legit it's okay but I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of a couple of false shepherds now who were very prominent. One was prominent in the 50s. <sighs> yeah, I'll say his name, William Branham. And the other is contemporary. His name is Bob Jones. Bob Jones was a prophet at IHOP. I, I just, I believe it's okay for me to reveal their name, so I'm going to. The scripture says to expose them anyway. But if you look at these two cats, they operated in phony spiritual gifts. They operated under a false anointing, and there is a false anointing out there. I don't understand the dynamics of it fully. I do know familiar spirits come into play, but I think in some instances even higher powered demons, perhaps even fallen angels come into play. But these two guys, Bob Jones and William Branham, and you can watch videos of them to see that I'm not making this up. They, they both, they're false personas were kind of hayseedy, backwoods, kind of, kind of, you know, not educated at all, slow. Um, I don't, this is not a nice term, but, you know, back in the day before I knew Yeshua, I would have called them hicks. They, they look like hicks, you know, just backwoods. But, but they were, but they were prophets and they had the ability to read your mind and, and predict the future with some success. Branham, Branham had great success in that department. He, he was a champion when it came to working with familiar spirits. 
and false anointings. But, but they appealed to the mystical-minded people. Or the Jews, like Paul, you know, said the Jews seek after signs and miracles and moves of God and prophecies and the mystical. Then you have a group which I think is larger, the group of false teachers who appeal to the head, appeal to the ego, appeal to the soul. They don't edify. They don't emphasize the humanity of Yeshua and our identification with the man, Yeshua. They don't emphasize that at all. They avoid it. Is this coming out okay? Mm -hmm. They're going to appeal to your intellect. They're going to appear impressive, this type of false teacher is. And he's going to have a attitude that I would call, I would call this attitude he has, this false teacher this attitude. It's important to look at an attitude of somebody. You're not going to determine a, a person's attitude by the mere words that come out of their mouth. You will, you will learn the attitude of anyone only by spending time with them and seeing them behind the scenes, if you will, when no one's really watching. A lot of times you'll see someone's true attitude then. How, whatever the circumstance behind it, you're not going to learn an attitude about some, an individual, particularly a false shepherd who is expert at cloaking and hiding his true self and true motive. But at least if you make a conscious effort and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to discern attitude, attitude. Because I'm telling you, every false teacher that I've ever been aware of, particularly on the Greek mindset end, the ones with the Greek intellectual mindset trying to appeal to that demographic. I can't think of an exception. They all have this, and I'll put it this way, I'm the adult in the room and you're the child. I'm the authority figure and you are the student. I have all the answers. I am complete, not in him, not in Yeshua. I am complete in myself. Come, look, I'm sorry. I hope you'll permit me to act stupid <laughs> and talk like an idiot. But come, this is what I'm saying, come to my office. Look at these degrees. Have I told you how I earned this one? Anyway, you know where I'm going with this. They're, that attitude, though, I'm the adult. Prideful. Yeah, it is pride. But the attitude of not here to serve, but an attitude of I'm here to be served. I'm here to be obeyed. I got the answers. You don't. I'm the adult. Now, Paul, in what I've been reading here the last couple of days in the book of Corinthians, he, he goes a step further. He's, call, he's, ta, he's calling out these false teachers that infiltrated the church at Corinth and tells them, you, you, you are so puffed up 
that you not only look at yourselves as the adult in the room, you look at yourself like you're some kind of king. A king mentality. Some of them even go so far as to have a God mentality. You should look at me like I'm your God. Attitude. You will never be able to discern fully who and who is not a false teacher by the words they speak. They're going to say the right things. An apostate probably knows the Bible better than you. He has created an entire false self on the Bible. He knows the Bible. He doesn't know him. He doesn't know the man. But he knows his Bible. Okay, back to my, I think it was my original point. <laughs> Sorry. Um, they want to be respected by the world. Both type, both the mystical type of false teacher and the Greek, the intellectual type of false teacher, both of them have a desire, a thirst, a hunger to be looked on like you demand from the world, not just not just in the church but they they want to be the goat yeah they do man they're proud and pride comes out pride comes out man eventually but you got to look for it Okay, they. I'm going to read now what Paul wrote to these false teachers. He's talking to them directly in this letter to the church at Corinth. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Amplified classic. Paul. Paul talking to. A, let's, see what, let's see what Paul would say to a false teacher. When you, I would like to know what Paul thinks of them. I'm going to paraphrase this a little bit, but so, but you study it out to make sure my paraphrasing is is spot on. Okay, this is Paul to the wolves in sheep's clothing at Corinth. This is what he has to say about them. This is what he thinks of them. You behave, again, this is the false teachers he's talking to, you act like you behave as if you've, you're already filled and, and you think you have enough already. You're full and content. You feel like you have need of nothing more. I call that self-satisfaction. You're self-satisfied. You present a persona of confidence I've got it all got my trophy wife got my trophy car got my private jet got my mansion or maybe they don't they don't they don't have a mega church you can have a false I've seen a false shepherd over a small church in which I may not have all this other fancy stuff, but I got you where I want you. Mm-hmm. Look for that self-satisfied attitude, though. You're not going to see a heart cry for God in a false prophet. You're not going to sense that. 
it used to bother me. I'd see these big name ministers and it's like, how come I feel like I'm hungrier for God than he is? He just seems kind of lackadaisical when he's talking about Yeshua, my savior. And he's just kind of talking about him like he's just some other guy. You know, he's just, the, he's just some other guy came up with another religion, Jesus. I don't hear excitement. I don't hear love. I don't hear warmth. I hear none of those things for God when in the that come out of the heart of a false teacher. None of them. I hear intellect most of the time. Knowledge. Self-satisfied. Already, I'm quoting Paul here, talking to him. You, you already, already, I mean, you've already become rich in spiritual gifts and graces without any counsel or instruction from us. And you have ascended your throne and come into, I mean, he's, you, you think you're a king is what he's saying. And worse still, I'm not going to read it, but he's, he's telling these false preachers, all the world thinks highly of you. The Corinthians think highly of you. The mayor likes you. The mayor thinks you're great. He likes your church. The neighbors like you. You're well respected among the community at Corinth. They think you got it together. Well, of course the, the worldlings in Corinth thought that they had it together. Of course their church was well respected by the world. They adopted the world standards. You, you, even under the name of Christ, even, even, un, even if you are a church and you, uh, you know, ostensibly acknowledge Jesus is Lord, but if you adopt, the, if a church adopts the standards of the world, the world will accept them. They're Christians. Christian. They're just like us. I'm thinking this is how the world is thinking of the, the leaders at Corinth. They like them. The world likes them. They got it together like kings. Man, they got a little kingdom going on there at Corinth, that church there. It's pretty cool. When you adopt the world standards and you seek to be accepted by the world, the world will accept you. Now Paul, on the other hand, he goes on to compare what they looked like to their neighbors, what the church leaders looked like to their worldly neighbors at Corinth, to what he looked like to them. And I'm not going to read it, but in verse 10 in chapter 4, please look it up. He says, we're, we're looked upon by the people at Corinth who think you're great. But these same people in the world who think you, you got it together look at me like I'm a fool. They look at me like a naive fool following after some fantasy. These are Greeks. Greeks and mystics don't get along. They probably looked at Paul like some, I don't know what they looked at him as, but Paul basically said, they do look at me like I'm a fool for Christ. They look at me as, well, he put it this way, they look at me like I'm a prisoner taken captive, being led through this, the main streets of the city, and I'm the guy bound in chains, last in line, getting ready to be executed. 
That's what the people at Corinth think of me. And if you are truly his, if you truly belong to the man who was hated by the world, we're identified with a man who was hated by the world. Yeah. And when I say the world, I don't mean... I'm talking about the apostates running the world. No, not politicians. The phony moral authorities. That's who's running the world today, if you only knew it. It's not the deep state. There are deeper people than the deep state. And they're in religious circles, baby. I look like a fool to these very same people who esteem you highly, Mr. False Teacher. So, Paul is essentially asking or showing, putting forth this argument. Paul is putting forth this argument to the the sheepfold at Corinth. Now, who do you think's the true? Who do you think? Who do you believe is truly authorized from God to share Yeshua with you? Not just his message, but the man. Who's qualified? The guy who the world embraces? Or the guy who the world spits upon? Your call. I think it's a good argument. I think I'm going to stop here. I think I've gone on long enough. I hope this was a okay message. Was it okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Look for attitude. No, I'm not going to stop. Let's go to Philippians. Mm -hmm. Let me find it. Philippians 2. Verse, I'll start at verse 4. No, let me start at verse 5. This is Paul again. He says this, Let this attitude, purpose, and humble mind be in you, which was also in Yeshua the Messiah. This is interesting because if I'm identified with another human being and not a doctrine or a philosophy, I want to know what I want to know what this man I'm in covenant thinks. I want to know what his attitude is. We've been talking about attitudes and the in a in a wrong attitude, the attitude of the false shepherd. I want to know what my man thinks. I want to know what my man, I want to know how my man feels about everything, really. I just don't want to read a letter from my man, Yeshua. I want to know him. I want to know what's in his heart, don't you? I want to know what's in it. I want to know what he's feeling. His attitude. I want to be able to not just read his words. I want to hear his voice. I want to I want to hear the emo I want to you know what I mean? I want to feel his emotions. I want to know what turns him on and what turns him off. The man, my man, your man, your man. Well, 
Well, this is his attitude. This is the attitude, the purpose. I want to know his purpose, too. And his mind. This is in his, this is the mind of Yeshua. He esteemed everyone more highly than himself. Can you believe that's how God really thinks? He thinks you're more important than he is himself. He values you more than he does his own self. (laughs) He proved it. Didn't he? Didn't he prove he loves you more than he loves his own self? I think so, in spades. We all look at the crucifixion as the whore that he went through. No, the whore, he experienced whore and pain and despair and agony and trial from the moment he was born, probably in the womb even. He went through trauma for us from day one. Not just the crucifixion, from the moment he was conceived, I'll say, till the till the moment he was raised from the dead. He went through hell for us. Why? Because he loves us more than he loves himself. He thinks more highly of you. Yeah, you and me than he does himself. Uh, you ain't going to see that attitude with a false shepherd. None of them. It is so foreign to us. It is to me at least. To know that there's someone out there. I can only think of two people who I believe love me more than they love themselves. One of them is Tony. I do believe that. I feel the same way about her. and Yeshua and a true shepherd he's going to esteem you more highly he's going to esteem your needs more highly than his own that's the mind of Yeshua the man we call it love He loves you. He was driven with a drive we will never understand to free you and to translate you out of the hand of your enemies into His kingdom. Don't forget that. <laughs> I'll try not to. I think I'll quit here. And we do. We bless every one of you. Thank you so much for watching. And Tony and I, I don't know. I never get tired of saying this. I, we bless you. We, in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, I bless you, spirit, soul, body, yes. and financially. And financially bless all of you and may you together with me and all of us may we all grow in the knowledge and understanding of the man and may God heal your hearts your broken hearts <laughs> I pray that for all of us too yes. all of our broken hearts and yes, heal them. I, I believe this we've been talking about this recently I think we all operate on spiritual levels far lower than mm-hmm. what Hashem designed us yeah. for don't you yeah. and I'm not saying that to beat us over the head either it's no. just it's, it's just it it's how it is you know we love you we'll see you <laughs>